Well, this video took me about three months to create, and I think the results are going to be interested. I personally can learn something from this video, and I think you can too. So what I did was I sprayed my backyard with one combination of products, weed control products. I sprayed the front yard with just one single pre-emergent product, and I want to compare the results with you now. Today's video is sponsored by Mosier. So if you're like me and you do a lot of measuring for your business, then Mosier is handy for that. The problem with like a measuring wheel is you got to use a lot of math and not all lawns are perfectly square or rectangle. And so you end up measuring triangles and you end up estimating and not being exact. Mosier takes into effect odd shaped lawns. Mosier factors in things like elevation changes that you can't do with a measuring wheel. And even uh, measuring online can be challenging because there may be trees or it may be a new property where the image is not updated online. So if measuring is important for your business, check out Mosier. I also like that it's just a one-time upfront fee, no monthly recurring fees. All right, so let's take a look at the, the yard here. And I'm, this thing's gonna shape up. I know it doesn't look great. And those with cool season grasses don't understand how in the world is our grass not super green in April. But when the temperature's been down in the 30s recently, this is what you get. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flash back to the, the footage in January and show you what we did because we sprayed this front yard with just the pre-emergent in the back. I used a combination of products. So let me uh, show you the flashback footage and then we'll pick up from there. So here's the products. This is this is a pre-emergent. So this is Resolute 4FL. This is Prodiamine. So this is what I'm putting out before the crabgrass germinates to help keep the crabgrass out. That's the main uh, strategy with that. This is a spectacle flow. I often use it in the fall to get ahead of cool season weeds like Poa Annua. But this year I actually put three ounces in with my round one mix to help if there is some poa annual that's gonna germinate like in February or March time frame, I'm hoping it's gonna help out with that. This is atrazine. It is a restricted use pesticide. It is to help with some broadleaf weeds. Uh, this is triplet. Also, uh, it, this is a three-way um, product is gonna help with some broadleaf weeds as well. And this is my surfactant. So with these products, okay, when I'm doing my round one treatment here early in the year, I definitely want the prodiamine here. Not that expensive and gonna do a great job on keeping the crabgrass out of the lawn. The spectacle flow, I'm kind of debating on it, honestly. I, I put it out in the fall, seen a little bit of POA breakthrough, not much. And I, I've been using it the past few years, like in April or May timeframe, which helps big time with Kalinga, Doveweed, things like that. Using it now, I'm wondering if I missed out on those three ounces, how much POA would actually germinate in February or March? You know, would my fall application of spectacle keep it out? Or is this extra three ounces I'm doing now really making a difference? I don't know the answer to that, but I'd love to hear from you if you know the answer. So definitely need this, okay? This is gonna be great on crabgrass better than this in my uh, understanding. So this might help with some late POA and then also carry on through and hopefully keep out some of the spring weeds that are gonna start germinating. So this combination double pre-emergent. Definitely want this one in there. I'm not 100% sure on this, but think it's helpful. Atrazine, gonna help with like hen bent clover and some of those type of weeds. But sometimes I wonder if I left the atrazine out, would the triplet do almost as good uh, just by itself? So triplet's gonna do good on those broadleaf weeds as, as well as uh, you know those weeds I mentioned, plus like dandelions and things like that. So here's what I did on my lawn. I sprayed all of this on my lawn, all of it on the back part back here, all of this, everything and that. It all came in there, surfactant, triplet, atrazine, spectacle flow, resolute, everything. But as I'm spraying, you know, there's not that many weeds, but so that comes to my mind, I'm like, do I need to really be spraying all these stuff if there's not hardly any weeds in the yard? I mean, my fall pre-emergent did such a great job. Could I just put down the prodiamine and be fine? Well, I just really wanted to see the difference. So I want to uh, testing here in my mind, making mental notes, spraying all of this with that big combination I just showed you and the rest of my yard spraying it with just the prodiamine. I want to see the difference. So a few questions you might ask yourself if you're trying to get by with a little bit cheaper combination. One question you might ask yourself is, when am I coming back to spray a post-emergent product again? And so for my situation, for my customer's lawns, I'm planning on spraying this combination 
And then I think this year I'm gonna be back in March spraying a little bit more spectacle with some dismiss, with some mesofuron. So my thinking is, you know, let's just say that there were some weeds out there and I missed. I'm gonna be back in March to spray again. And I think by March, they're not gonna be that big and very noticeable in the lawn again. So I got another chance to come back and get them. Now, again, I'm not doing it on my customer's yards. I'm trying to keep those looking great and take care of them. But I'll be interested to see are more weeds popping up on the other side of my yard where I only use the prodiamine. So what I was trying to test back then was, you know, am I using too many chemicals on the lawn or is it necessary? Is it is it really giving us any results? So fast forward, we're in April. This is like peak season for weeds in my area. I mean, you can drive by yards, you can tell which ones are on a treatment program, which ones are not. The ones that are not are absolutely covered in weeds. And so let's look at it and see what the case is and then we're gonna draw some conclusions. Well, just a general glance over the yard and you can see there are not that many weeds, but there are weeds and I wanna show you the ones that we have. Now this is the front yard. This is where we just sprayed the prodiamine, our pre-emergent. And I wanna show you initially just the difference in this uh, hillside over here because I don't spray this hillside. Well, I don't spray it very often and it's got a little, very little grass on it. But this is the kind of stuff that we're seeing in yards all the time right now. I mean, just giant weeds all over the place. Stuff that looks like this. I mean, this is peak mature weed season for our cool season weeds. Wild violets, field matter, whatever that stuff is. Lots of stuff, dandelions. All right, so you can obviously compare it to that uh, that hillside to the rest of the yard it doesn't look anything remotely close to that but what do we see in the yard well as i walk through the yard and i know where some of the weeds are that live here one of the things i'm going to notice is you're going to have nut sage already popping up and this area you get a lot of nut sage i'm not exactly sure why oh here it is look at all this nut sage popping up not as not horrible but it's it's coming so would that have changed if i would have sprayed it in the back no it would not have changed most emergent products weren't going to do anything to the nut sedge anyway now what about this i don't know what that weed's called but that's some kind of just simple broad leaf weed there it'd be easy to kill that i could have controlled and here's another one could have controlled that and by the way i haven't mowed this grass in about two weeks so it's a good time to show the weeds. That's the other hot tip I kind of alluded to. I hadn't mowed the grass in two weeks. Honestly, when you got very few weeds, if you just mow the grass, a lot of these cool season weeds can't handle the mowing pressure. And when your grass starts being mowed regularly, you're not gonna have these weeds. But I'm glad for this sake that it's been about two weeks since I mowed so that we can see the weeds that are in the lawn. Now I'm not seeing a whole lot, but I am seeing just a little bit of poa annual here. Now, would that have done anything different? No, I doubt it. That probably germinated back in the fall. So I don't think putting out some post-emergent products would have done anything to control POA. I didn't use a product that would have killed the POA anyway. Then you've got a little bit, what I believe is American burn weed, and it's starting to pop up. But there's very, very little, and that's a commonly uh, seen weed this time of year best probably prevented with a, a pre-emergent in the fall, you know, put out the spectacle flow can have some reduction in the amount of burn weed in the yard, but it's, it's a weed that I see oftentimes this time of year, very easy to kill. And again, mowing the grass a couple of times usually gets rid of it, or you can spray just about any broadleaf herbicide and knock it out. So again, just to make sure that we're seeing the same thing here. Are there some weeds? Yes. Are there very few weeds? Yes. I've got very few weeds in this yard. Now let's go look at the back where I sprayed a combination and see what the difference is. All right, now we're back here in the back and let me first notice, one, it's significantly greener. Now I think that is probably because we scalped this yard down a lot earlier. And when you scalp down a Bermuda grass lawn, a lot of times what you're doing is getting rid of the dormant grass, which allows the sunlight to get down to the roots, warm the soil up faster and cause the new growth to come up and so it turns green faster. Now, sometimes doing that, you might get a late frost and it may hit that new growth and it may turn brown anyway. But in this situation, you'll notice significantly greener than the front yard. What about the weed situation? Again, a lot more product went out on this side of the yard than the other side. Well, as soon as I walk back here, 
what I see. Nut sedge, it's here. Okay, now again, I wasn't expecting what I sprayed to do anything on the nut sedge, but just to show you, you're still going to have weeds in this situation. Now, other than the nut sedge, I'm not seeing a whole lot of anything back here. Now, I got, look at there, wild onion, been mowed off and still growing back. So got onions there, the, the metzulfuron. I don't remember if I put that in a mix or not, but that would have taken care of that. But as I walk around here, I see almost no weeds in this entire place. And I'm just gonna walk a little bit further. Well, here's some nut sage. And then there's one of those, whatever that is. Is that vetch maybe? I don't know. Y'all tell me what that is, but tiny little weed barely noticeable and this is almost two acres of grass back here i don't see any american burn weed certainly no clover dandelions henbit field matter yellow wood sorrel i don't see much of anything back here unless i get on the very edge of the yard where i did not spray all right so we've made our observations now let's draw some conclusions i'm going to tell you my thoughts and what we can learn from this as i did walk over here where there's virtually no grass you got some yellow wood sorrel looks like a little clump of broom sedge there so there's you know almost no grass and where i probably didn't spray you got some weeds over here getting the edge of this gravel there's some big weed there so a little bit but where there's grass there's almost no weeds Again, just one more example. Out here, grass is kind of thin, very few weeds. You get over here behind this shrub where I did not spray, weeds like crazy. I'll give you more examples. Lots of weeds. Lots of weeds. All right, so what can we learn from this? Well, let me give you one more twist in the plot. Today I went to a property, and I'm going to show this property later on a video, or I'm planning to. And it's a property that had tons of weeds in it early in the year. And I got out there and sprayed the whole property with glyphosate, which is the active ingredient found in Roundup, and, and prodiamine, which is the pre-emergent. Anyway, I come back today, which has been like two months later, and I think I'd been back for a while. I forget exactly what all I did to it. Come back today, it's still covered in weeds. Still got tons of weeds, yellow wood soil, all kind of weeds. And it was a little bit disappointing, a little bit shocking, honestly. But just to show you, that property had way more stuff sprayed on it than this one, than either front or back of this property, and it still had tons of weeds in it, even after spraying it with glyphosate. So it's just showing you there are a lot of weeds germinating at this time of year, and so I think that's just, just showing you, like, it's not because there's no weeds in the area, okay? If, I, if Bermuda grass, if you know anything about it, if you don't spray a pre-emergent on a Bermuda lawn, you're typically going to be covered up with weeds. All right, what can we learn? Well, I think one thing we can learn is in this situation, there was a little bit of difference when I used the post-emergent mixed in with the pre-emergent. It was better, okay? There was uh, very few weeds on the front yard, but there was virtually no weeds on the backyard. Now, one of the things that made the difference is the front yard as well as the backyard are nice and thick and healthy. Okay, if this would have been a thin lawn that that had a lot of weed pressure then it would have probably been covered with weeds because it was thick and healthy and because the second thing is because it had virtually no weeds in it last year i had kept the weeds clean so you think about these annual weeds or dropping seeds there was very few seeds to reproduce this year and i put down a pre-emergent okay so it's not like there was no barrier against the weed control there, there was a weed control strategy they're just the fall pre-emergent that I did, okay, which will probably spray spectacle flow out here. That did a great job of getting ahead of these cool season weeds. There's almost no cool season weeds there. So I, I really think that was probably the key to it all was I did the fall pre-emergent and there was almost no weeds here to kill with a post-emergent. Now, if I had skipped the fall application and there would have been a lot of weeds in here and then I would have just did a pre-emergent, I think it would have been significantly different results. So the thick grass helps because that's going to choke out a lot of weeds. The fall application helps tremendously. And I think the one thing we did see, though, even doing those things, there still were some weeds in the front and the back, like the nutsedge. You know, so you're going to have some weeds even if you do everything pre and post emergent and i'm not going to go back and blanket spray the whole yard that's a situation where we're just going to go in there and spot treat the weeds with 
whatever product is needed for that particular weed. Again, another application, we talked about this, if I mow the grass one or two times, the front's gonna look just as good as the back because a lot of those weeds are not gonna show up after I cut the grass once or twice. But the one thing that we talked about previously, and I think this is where, from a lawn care perspective, where I'm oftentimes gonna mix in multiple post emergence or at least one, is because in a thick lawn like this, okay, that, that didn't have a lot of weeds, you still just don't know what weeds are lying beneath the surface. I had no idea that some of these weeds were there. I mean, this weed right here could have possibly started growing in October, and I had no idea that it was in the lawn. And somehow it's gotten by everything, and here it is, near maturity, and it's probably gonna give up the ghost when the lawnmower hits it, but you see what happens. It, it somehow got through. So I think that's a big misconception. A lot of times people think if you don't see any weeds and they're not there. Oftentimes by the time you see them, they've already been growing for quite some time. When I see these mature weeds in the spring, they could be four or five months ago when they actually germinated in the lawn. Same in the summer. There may be some crabgrass in a lawn, a customer, and they start noticing in June or July and say, I got a yard full of crabgrass. What they don't know is I really would have needed to spray a pre-emergent back in February to get ahead of that crabgrass. So just understand that just because you don't see weeds in the yard, that there doesn't mean that they're not there. But if you have a clean yard that's thick and healthy, you can get away with a lot more and you may not get just exactly the same results but you get pretty close and i think we've been able to show that in this video thanks for watching if you haven't done so subscribe to the channel if you want to get into weed control and fertilization like me go to lawncarelife.com that's where you'll find the weed control and fertilization academy soon we're going to be launching the 2025 lawn care life conference really excited about that we've already got our speakers lined up for that more details to come thanks for watching we'll see you guys in the next video